and welcome back to the stable renovation series. Yes, we're not quite done yet because today's episode is all about the new feed room. We've done quite a lot in this series. We've painted all the stables. We've added the wash bay. We've added Duke's new stable. We've even got the new tack room as well. But finally, it's time to do the feed room, um, which is very important because, you know, that's where I want to make up all the horses' feeds. I don't know why I left this till last, but here we go. At the moment, the uh, new feed room was the old tack room. So there's lots of different bits and bobs in there. And it is very messy. It is not looking good. Um, yeah, basically the last sort of few weeks while we've been making the transition into the new tack room, I just haven't really tidied it because I'm like, I don't need to, I'm not using this room anymore. So it's an absolute pigsty. So what I did yesterday was I did a massive tidy up. So here's past Esme doing a very satisfying time-lapse of me getting everything out of there, ready for me to paint it today. It seems so weird seeing the new feed room completely empty because this has been my tack room for like four or five years. Um, I'm used to it being absolutely jam-packed. Even though everything's been taken out, it still does feel quite small. So the plan today is, I thought the painting would be over by now. If you couldn't tell by the outfit I'm wearing today, we're gonna be doing some painting. Um, if you watched my tack room renovation series, you'll know that I really couldn't decide between this nice olive green sort of sage green paint or the gray. I went for the gray in the end because that's what you guys voted for on Instagram, but I thought to go with the horse feed and everything, the green would actually look really nice in here. It's a bit of a lighter color. I didn't want to go too dark in here um, because it's a small room and that'll just make it seem even smaller. So I thought the nice light green would be nice. It's also a little bit more practical compared to white because um, it's not white. But anyway, so that's the plan for today. I think I'm just gonna do the bottom to start with. I don't know if I'm even gonna paint the top, but anyway, time to get the paint out, time to do some painting and this again is gonna be very satisfying. Oh, I should have shaken it before. Ooh, okay, moment of truth. Will it be a nice color? Um, I was just thinking, I have used this screwdriver a lot. I feel like if any agri girls out there will understand what I mean, but I find I use a screwdriver for things that it's not supposed to be used for. For example, stirring paint, opening up a paint pot, jump starting our quad that the key doesn't work in so you have to use a, I probably shouldn't be telling you that. But anyway, um, the green color of the paint, it's actually way nicer than I remember. Obviously you can see it on the outside of the tin, but on the inside, it's like, a, it's a different game. It's a different game. Obviously I've got to wait for it to dry and things. I was worried it was going to be a little bit too dark or it was going to look like a kind of ugly Shrek green. But it's actually a really nice green. I'm really happy with it. So um, it's going to look like one of those nice little cottagey kitchens. That's the sort of style I'm going for in here. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, time to do some painting. Okay, first bit. Oh, that is a nice green. I love that. I don't know if I'll look a bit blue on the camera. And this light, in certain light, it does look a tiny, tiny bit bluey. It looks more bluey than I was expecting, but it's still very pretty. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. Watch me walk away, putting myself on display. One, two, three a day. I'm on my way, on my way. I'ma have you on tiptoes, watching my diamond after glow. I know you wanna take me home. I'm on my way, on my way.
judge me, I'll testify Catch me on Insta, I'm verified They want me quiet, I amplify I'm on my way, on my way to The best thing that you've ever seen, you Know that you bow to the queen, you Lose all your senses and reason I'll give you something to believe the green paint is now complete and I am so happy with how it looks. I was so worried it was going to be such a horrible green or that it just wouldn't suit it or it would be too dark. But I think it looks really nice. Hopefully it looks more green and less uh, blue now in this light. But yeah, I'm really happy. It's a beautiful sage green. You might notice that there was a big box at the back that I used to put my helmets in. Now I've just taken that down because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint that in the nice gray. Um, and then I was thinking I could put my feed buckets in that box. Obviously I did actually measure it out to see if it fits. Um, I can fit four in the actual box, but then I could put, um, how many equines do I have now? And then I could put the three donkeys ones up on the top and I think that would look really nice, especially as the buckets are quite a bright color. So I think with the gray, it won't be, it won't be too much, you know? Um, I'm just need to also think about where the feed bins are gonna go. I think I might put it against this wall just cause uh, that wall, um, I'm basically gonna put the feed bucket, uh, the feed bin against the most ugly wall because then it can, it can cover up the less pretty parts, but, I was thinking, what am I gonna do on this bit of ply here? Um, so we put this up ages ago when I actually did a bit of a tack room renovation kind of thing. I can't even remember when that was. Was it like three years, three, two, three years ago? Anyway, um, I was thinking of having like a big whiteboard and putting all of the horses' names and what they eat because this is the feed room. Now I was thinking, Let's not do a whiteboard, let's do a blackboard, make it a little bit more vintagey. Um, and this is something I can actually make myself. So I actually bought some blackboard paint. So um, with masking tape, because I definitely do not trust myself, I'm gonna measure out um, where I want the blackboard to go and then paint that. And I think I'm gonna leave the rest wood just because um, the chipboard's really difficult to paint. Um, I, can, I, th I was thinking I could maybe put some pictures up to make it look prettier, but anyway, let's go and paint the blackboard. Here I have my chalkboard paint I'm gonna be using. Now, because this is black, I feel like this is gonna be a bit of, the day, bit of a danger zone because I'm quite messy. I have put, you know, my uh, lovely masking tape here, but one wrong move, if I get the black paint on the green, it's, it's game over, it's not gonna be good. So um, gonna have to be very, very careful and hopefully I won't make a, make a mess, I'll do it well, and it will look good. Let's go. <laughs> the blackboard is now complete and I think it's looking so good. I've also painted a little bit more green back here because the boxes are gonna go up, it's gonna cover the messy bit, so don't worry, it looks messy now. It'll look good in the end. Um, so the last thing I need to do, which might actually be the last ever bit of painting of this project, I'm not gonna say never say never because I'm sure there will be some more painting that I'll end up doing because I cannot escape the painting. If I just sum up this year in three words, one of those words would probably be painting. But anyway, the plan is again to paint the brickwork um, all the way around the edge like I did um, previously with the tack room and also paint the floor. The floor actually looks really funny because there's this sort of area where it's lighter and I think that's where I had my chest of drawers and my wardrobe in here back when it was a tack room. And um, I think I repainted the floor at some stage, but just like went round it, or it's just where it's kind of worn away. But anyway, this I find really satisfying. Hopefully I need to find the roller again, maybe to paint the floor. Um, but the brickwork, it's not that fun, but the rolling, that is. So it's a nice bit of painting to do for the last painting of the project. It's sort of a bittersweet moment. I'm happy but sad about it because I really enjoyed the stable renovation series. Um, but anyway, I need to go and grab the paint and get painting. Oh 
my goodness, how good does it look with the floor painted? I feel like with the floor painted, the green really does pop just that much more because the gray is kind of like a bluey gray for the floor. Um, but anyway, I will um, have to wait now 24 hours for the floor to dry. So no more going in there for today, but I am very excited for putting in all of the feed bins, all of the feed. But have you ever wondered how horse feed is made? I was lucky enough last summer to go to the Bailey's Horse Feeds Mill. As you guys know, I'm very lucky to be a sponsored rider for them and it was so cool to see how it was made. So here's some footage of back in the summer. I'm here in Essex in a field of wheat that's right next door to the Bailey's Horse Feeds Mill. Today I'm going to be showing you how this locally sourced crop can then be turned into the feed that you and I give our horses. First the cereals from the field are brought into the mill and stored in these large hoppers before being soaked and then cooked rapidly using infrared technology called micronization. This makes the feed more easily digested by the horse. Behind me here we have a few hoppers and each one has an individual ingredient. The computer then looks at the recipe and decides how much mass is needed of each ingredient to make up the horse feed because obviously each horse feed is different and you have to be really precise with the ingredients. All right guys, welcome to the lab. So here I have some feed. Um, so each batch of Bailey's horse feed is sampled and then this is tested for naturally occurring prohibited substances. So this is really critical and really important. For example, athletes such as Holly Smith, who's currently um, competing on the Team GB show jumping team in the Olympics in Tokyo. But also it's really important for um, shelf life and the quality of the feed that's also tested so very, very important stuff. We've seen the feed being made, but the last process we're going to see is how the feed is bagged. So over here, we have some locale balancer bags, which you guys might recognize from my feed room. So this is what Mickey and Casper are fed. And if we go over here, I can show you it being bagged. Oh my goodness. Look at this. How cool. This is so satisfying to watch. Once the feed is bagged, this very clever robot behind me then stacks 50 of the bags onto a pallet, which is one ton. So that's one heavy pallet and a lot of feed. then picked up by these electric forklifts and taken into this absolutely huge warehouse. Welcome to the warehouse. So this is where all the feed is stored and oh my goodness, I have never seen so much horse food in my life. There are so many different bays, it goes so high up as well. I don't know how the forklift is gonna lift this pallet all the way up there, but... And all of these are one ton as well, my goodness. I don't think even Mickey could eat this much food in his lifetime. This main warehouse is actually only one years old and up on the roof we have solar panels as well as out in the field next door. Behind me here we have the inverters that then convert the um, solar energy from the solar panels into electricity that's then used to power the mills as well as my electric car. Time to open up the trucks, get the feed in, get it ready to go. Bailey's also has its own fleet of trucks delivering feed UK wide. Then once the feed is loaded, it's time to send it off to the wholesalers, which can then feed you and my horses. Look, and there's Joey. <laughs> So 
So here we have the feed that we've just got from our local feed shop. Um, so that is all ready to go. Before we put it in the new feed room, um, I thought I'd show you around. It looks a little bit different. We've added a few things since you've last seen it. And also I need to take the tape off the uh, blackboard. So that's going to be very satisfying. All right, before I show you around, I thought I'd show you something very exciting first. We now have lights. It has been so long since we've had lights in here and before we just had like a pull string one that didn't work very well. But we have lights. It's going to be so nice and bright in here. So first thing in the morning when it's still dark, I can make the feeds without having to use a torch. So that's going to be great. But here we have it, the blackboard. This is going to be very satisfying if I do it correctly, taking the tape off. Ooh. Okay, next one. Okay, we have two for this one because I did not trust myself. Oh, those lines are so clean. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Look at that. Okay, I haven't got any chalk yet, so I'm gonna have to order some. Um, but I thought I could like write all of the horses, like feeds on here, what they have their names, I don't know, something like that. I thought that would be really cute. It kind of feels like, you know, like at a cafe, they have the menu up on, <laughs> up on the wall. Here we have the horse menu. <laughs> um, I need to put this away because it's very sticky. Um, but we also have some shelves up here, as you can see, expertly put up nice and straight. Um, I was thinking I could put all the feed buckets up here, put them in their little rainbow order. I've also got this ten of treats that I need to find somewhere for. Um, but yeah, it's not looking too bad. We painted this green um, so it kind of looks all seamless. But yeah, I think the next thing I need to do is grab the metal feed bin that I made absolutely ages ago, it feels like, back in the summer, pop it in here and put some feed in. Here we have the feed bin. I've put it here for now, just because this side of the wall isn't as pretty as the other one. I just felt like it kind of should go here. So if we lift it up, I still need to put the feed in here, but I've just put one, um, like a little label maker label on here. So then we can tell what feed is what. And um, so yeah, we have the Bailey's locale balancer that's gonna go in here. So I just need to do one for the light chaff and also one for the performance balancer because that's what Joey has. So you guys might remember the label maker from a few stable renovation videos back. So yep, yeah, it's back now and um, I've put in the performance balancer. So let's go see it come out and we wait. Peak entertainment. It's still going. It's still going. It's done. This is the really fiddly bit, taking it off. I hate doing this. Ah, there we go, there's one. I don't know if I should put the performance balancer here in the middle or if that's going to be too confusing with them like right next to each other. So I might put the performance balancer here and then we can put the chaff in the middle. That might be a shout actually. Ta da Looking good. Wow. It is looking so good, guys. It's just the little details. It's the little things that make it. So having my little labels makes me very happy. It makes me feel very organized. But anyway, now it's time to go and get the actual food and put it in the feed bin. the only one who finds this so satisfying finally seeing all of the feed in the big metal feed bin okay it could be more satisfying if they were all perfectly up to the top um however i didn't realize how big this feed bin is for example the performance balancer there's still a little bit of room up here and that's got two whole bags in so it goes to show that um you know it's a bit like a tardis in here it doesn't feel that big in here but you can fit a lot inside so that's going to be very very satisfying each morning just lifting it up 
and then bam, I've got the feed here. Rather than, the, you know, the plastic ones, we have to lift it up, put the bin lid somewhere. And then also with the plastic ones, you know, it's more likely for mice and things to get in here. So having a big sturdy metal one is like my dreams come true. So I'm gonna pop that away. There's like a few little bits and bobs that I need to do. Um, I am currently <laughs> scrubbing the surfaces because it's just got years of grime, especially in all the sort of cracks in the wood. So I'm trying my best to give it a bit of a scrub and hopefully get it looking a little bit better. There's also bits of paint on here, so I might need to sand it, but we'll see how it goes. a year I have to re-permanent marker all of my feed buckets because their names wear off however uh, you guys all know whose bucket this is and uh, I've never written Duke on here before so it's the first time better not mess it up I don't have sort of a stencil or little fine lines from previous times so uh, how big have I done it okay so I've done it just over the two lines here he's got quite short names so this is gonna be quite tricky but I'll try my best There we go guys, Duke officially has his name on his cute little yellow feed bucket. People still ask me, yes, Duke's sort of colour, like I have a little colour for coordinating everything with the horses. So I know, for example, whose bucket is who. So Duke's colour's yellow. Um, I think it suits him, it looks really cute. It's also like the colour of kind of like a crown, you know, Duke, I don't know. Um, I think it looks really cute, it suits him. So now it's time to put it up. I need to do the others as well. I also need to sort out which bucket's going where. I haven't 100% decided, but it's not looking bad. It's not looking bad. So um, I've just moved all the buckets around on the floor because I'm going to be very picky about which bucket I want where, which sounds ridiculous, but I just think, you know, when they're in the right place, it just looks a lot more satisfying. Uh, so I've had a little bucket move around on the floor and hopefully it'll be really satisfying. First time putting them up, put them in the right order, and then bam, all the buckets will be beautifully up there, clean, with their new names on and displayed. Oh my goodness, how good does it look with all of the buckets in the back? There are a few little things that I want to change. For example, at the moment I've got the smaller buckets that have, for example, Willow's medicine in, some apples, cleaning things. I might make a little shelf here to put them on. Obviously I've got to do the uh, chalkboard as well. Um, so I was thinking, I don't want to be that YouTuber that's like, you don't see the finish reveal yet, but I was thinking um, next week filming a video doing a full tour so you can see what the wash bay looks like with the solarium in and working. You can see Duke's new stable. You can see a full tour of the new tack room as well with everything 100% finished and complete. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit but you can kind of see the magic, the sort of vision 
of the new feed room and I'm really liking it. I also have lots of really exciting videos coming soon. I had another jumping lesson with Joey, so that's gonna be in a vlog. Um, I've been to Ireland recently, um, filming with Kian O'Connor, so that was incredible. So lots of exciting videos, so uh, keep an eye out for that. But anyway, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe, because it really does help me out. And I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.